I thank you for stopping by Indie Dave Comics Channel. And of course, I'm your host, Indie Dave, the writer of up and coming comic Oddity Madness in the Marsh. And today we are here with Josh Howard, who is the writer of T Bird and Throttle, which is one of my, which is absolutely my favorite comic on any Google right now. Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, I got I got it the first well not the first time but the, the last time it it went on any go I go I got it and I was just gonna get the number three issue but then you went and you had to make these extra covers. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get it up. And why don't you tell us a little bit about T Bird and Throttle? T Bird and Throttle is. Um... It's sort of a story of, about superheroes, sort of about um, what takes what, what makes a hero, what makes a villain, and all those things. Um, it centers around uh, a guy called Mitch Maddox, who was an astronaut who found this alien device on the moon. Uh, it ends up bonding with him, gives him gives him superpowers. Uh, so he goes and becomes a superhero named T Bird, and then there's uh, an accident uh, that. Uh, Basically ends up ruining his career and his life and flash forward 10 years later. And that's sort of where the story starts. And he's raising his daughter uh, as a single dad and trying to restart his superhero career. So that's basically where we pick up and um, go from there. All righty. I'm looking and you're a fan of Bruce Tim, aren't you? He is an early influence. Yes. <laughs> The the art is just absolutely amazing. I, I, I love the art style on here. It's, uh, what what uh, influenced the creation of, of T Bird and Throttle? Um, it sort of started uh, when I was working at a comic shop about twenty years ago. Yeah, twenty years ago this year actually. Um, I was just goofing around in my free time, and I always like to draw and make stuff, you know, during my breaks or whatever. And looking around all the all the, all the comics, I was like, there's not a hero that has you know the, all the different motifs like spider bat etc there's mm -hmm. not a hero that has like a car motif so i thought it'd be funny to have a guy with like you know look like a windshield chest you know mm -hmm. the grill for a belt and all that and um so i did it as a joke you know called him t-bird obviously and then um the more i drew him the more i played around with him the more i started to actually like the character and so i start, started building a whole world around it and um so over the process of the last, like I said, 20 years, he's sort of been with me and I've grown his story. And um, so here we are. All right. Now, the incarnation we're getting is not the original comic. Tell me what happened there. Um, there was actually, I want to say, three false starts. Um, the first time it was going to come out was 2004, I believe. I got a few pages done, and then it was decided that my other book should continue. The publisher decided that we should continue on with my with Dead at 17, which was picking up steam at the time. They wanted to keep that going, so T-Bird got shelved. And then I tried again um, in 2008, or was it? It might have been before then. There was a time before then. Didn't get very far. And then 2008 was the time when I actually got a zero issue out on the shelves, and then... I finished number one, and then the publisher went under. Um, <laughs> so that left me <laughs> again with T Bird halted, um, which was very frustrating at the time. But now I think it was for the best because it was definitely not ready. That needed to cook a little bit longer before you know it needed to be what it was. All right, this is just super cool. I love the art. The story was really well done too. I loved kind of the little jokes that were in it. And it still had, you know, that kind of serious tone to it. You you brought in, I guess, some. I want to say modern politics, but not in the in the way like we think, like you know, Republican Democrat kind of thing. But some of a little bit of the kind of cancel culture stuff. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny, like a lot of that stuff was built into the story for a long time, but as time has gone on, it's become more and more relevant. Um, to where it feels very. <laughs> almost ripped from the headlines type of story, but it's always been that way. It just became, you know, like I said, uh, more of its time as time went on. So um, it's weird how that worked out. Yeah. I like the, the kind of the classic sci-fi elements, the, the moon, they're just basically just called moon men. I, I like, I like that kind of real, 
there's, I mean, there's, it's, it's a complex story, but there's like really simple, fun elements to it. Yeah, I mean, it's meant to be, you know, light and accessible on its front, on its cover, you know, on the surface. And then hopefully people realize there's a lot more going on than it appears. You know, I hope I can hook people in with, the, you know, the pretty pictures and then maybe they'll leave with something to think about. All right. So let's go over some of the tiers here. You can get the, just the book and that's going to be $20. Uh, let's see. Uh, and you can get, let's see, the digital copy for 10 and that's cool. Who's that girl on the cover? That is Emily. That is uh, T Bird, T Bird's daughter. All right. Yeah, we got a. Little, is she going to be a bigger part in this one? Because I know she. Uh... Yeah, she's kind of been in the background, but her story is definitely going to grow um, as we go on. She definitely is a, a focus in issue issue three. Yeah, and I like she's. Uh, she she has to deal a lot with you know what happened with her father and stuff like that, and it uh, it it really plays into it. It's cool that she's going to be a little more forefront. Now, is this kind of a hint at the kind of role she's going to play? Or is that more of just symbolic? Um, That remains to be seen. <laughs> All right. So we won't get into too many spoilers. Then. <laughs> All right. And then uh, you can get uh, all uh, the first four books, uh, or the zero through three uh, in digital, 25. Uh, you can get them the bundle, the physical bundle. That's going to be $40. Uh, let's see. And this is good. This, I like this because, you know, if you haven't gotten into it before, then this is a, a good shot to get everything. Uh, let's see. And then you're going to get these uh, these uh, homage covers. And right there, that's your selling point, this cover right here. <laughs> this is, uh, I saw, uh, I saw, I mean, I saw all of them. All of them are cool. I saw that. I'm like, oh, yeah, you got me sold. <laughs> yeah, that one was fun. <laughs> All right, so we got that cover, and then let's see, you got them all. You got the uh, the Batman cover, which is so cool. Yeah, that's one of my all time favorite covers. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you got the 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 New Mutants cover. I know uh, uh, Edwin Boyette's been really loving on that one. Awesome. <laughs> all right, uh, let me see. I skipped a couple of. Them. All right, so you get uh, the nine by twelve bus commission. Is that like a print? What's that all about? No, it's an original art commission. Um, just a character of your choice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Original art, uh, T-Bird and the Moon Men. Zero of one. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Original art, T-Bird fights. 200 bucks. Let's see. Original art, T-Bird fighting the monster. From the, that was in that first one. Uh, let's see. There we go. Oh, there you go. We cover art for the book two. Did you sell out of the other ones or did you not have it? They, they are gone. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There you go. Original art page. This was neat. Is this just like workups of the characters and stuff? Oh, uh, no. This, this is just a page from the book, like uh, original art. Um, those are just random pages on the picture, but. Oh, okay. Okay. You'll get, there, you'll get like a three. Like, okay. Well, that one sold out anyway. So I may, I may add a few more of those, actually. Oh, okay. So, well, that's yeah. cool. Uh, let's see. Here's another splash page. Again, sold out. Cover art. Wow, those sell quick, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I knew that one was going to be for sale. <laughs> uh, let's see. And then you get that cover, $300. Uh, what are, you, are you looking at stretch goals already? or? Um, I've got a couple things in mind. Um, we'll see. It depends on how it goes, you know. If we can make, make that initial goal, then we'll, you know, I'll start opening up stuff, other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody watching, probably it's, we're in the middle of the day, so probably not too many people are watching live, but hopefully I'll, re, I'll repost it uh, later on tonight. But uh, I, I want everybody to see this because this is, again, this is this is easily my favorite book. Not putting down anybody else, but this one really stands out in my mind of all the books I've backed. Uh, I've, I've actually really liked this. Um, also, I don't know if anybody else notices this, but this is my review right here. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, this one right here is another buddy of mine. Uh, I won't oh, say because you yeah, I wanted to put up paper ones names, but I figured some people may not. You know, yeah, no, no, that's understandable. I, I can tell by the picture; it was pretty clear to me. <laughs> yeah, so this was this was my review here. Just finished the first three issues of Joshua Howard's T-Bird and Throttle*. Good classic sci-fi superhero plot with a modern twist. 
few funny parts. The joke about the choice of superhero costumes gave me a laugh. When they were showing off all the costumes that they were going to give him, and one of yeah. them was the '90s with the with the uh, pockets and stuff, and all the 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 yeah, I, yeah. the pouches. I was I was laughing. I was like, that <laughs> that was good. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, that was fun. Um, also, I wanted to point out that you can read issue zero for free on the campaign page as well as the thir first thirty pages of issue one. So, if you want to give it a shot before you pledge, you can uh, do that. Definitely, definitely, you all need to check that out because, uh, oh it, no, it was it's such a good it's such a good series. Uh, let's see. So, are, are you, is this pretty much going forward? This is what uh, what you got in your schedule is more T Bird and Throttle. You plan on making it ongoing, or is this like just one story arc and then you're going to move on? Um, the first four is one story arc. It's basically the whole setup, the origin, everything, and then I've got lots more planned um story's definitely not over um but this part will be out this chapter will be done after number four um might take a break do something else in between but we'll see um so far it's going well people seem to respond to it really well so i'm excited to keep going congrats on your campaign too you seem to be doing really well yeah we're uh we're, we're kicking butt <laughs> yeah Awesome, man. I'm, I'm liking what we're doing. We're uh, we're having fun, and that's that's the big thing. We're having fun. It shows. We're showing. We're you know showing all the enthusiasm. And I yeah. think that's that's selling the book as much as actually showing the book off. Of course. There we go. Yeah, I accidentally backed into my contributions page. <laughs> that's not bad. One time I I was doing I was doing reviews of people's books, and I actually went to like all my personal information by accident. <laughs> uh. All righty. So um, tell us about some other past projects you've worked on that people might know you from. Um, the main thing I've done is a book called Dead at 17. It's a horror series um, initially published by Viper Comics. Then I moved to Image in 2008 or 2009. And uh, that ran until 2015. Uh, then I finished the series. Um, uh, released a giant all-in-one volume called Dead at 17, the complete collection, which you can get on Amazon. Um, that's the main thing I, I've done. I've done a couple other books, uh, one called Black Harvest. It was also put out by Image, and then one called The Lost Books of Eve, which was at Viper. Um, I did some uh, stuff for DC and IDW and nothing major. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the main thing. That's cool. We got some people in the chat. We got uh, Drew, A.K. Mister E. I think he said uh, he was about to he was about to leave. So thanks for stopping by, Drew, and I uh, hope you'll check us out again and definitely retweet or, or back uh, T Bird and Throttle. Uh, let's see, we got Chris Evans. Chris Evans is a really cool dude. He he posts he uh, he loves pushing other people's books. Yeah, he's been really cool about promoting T Bird. Really yeah, yeah. So we like having Chris Evans on, and uh, Zade Comics is also here. Hey, Zade. All right. Uh, if there's anybody that's still hanging around and uh, has some questions for Mr. Josh, uh, definitely post them up there. Uh, let's see. So, so this first four books you said that's going to complete the arc. Yeah, this will tell the whole story of his origin and uh, kind of set everything up for the future. All right, that's that's just super cool. All righty. Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Chris Evans is that's what I'm in the middle of doing right now. He's, he's probably uh sending uh, tweets out for you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Chris Chris, you're a good guy. We like we like having you as a fan. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's the thing. So so obviously uh we got a little Bruce Tim in there. What other kind of influences uh for art? How long have, uh, did you go to art school? Are you self taught or um, I'm, I'm mostly self-taught. I mean, I did go to art school and then dropped out <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't feel like they could really, it was an arts. I mean, I just felt like they were kind of teaching people how to draw who didn't know mm -hmm. how, and it just felt kind of like a waste of my time. And yeah, well, I'm not I, was, I was young and stupid, so <laughs> I didn't finish. <laughs> Maybe been a little arrogant at the time, but you know, uh, the one thing I did pick up from art school that, um, was Photoshop was in my introduction to Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So from there, I taught myself to color and everything. Um, but yeah, so yeah, early influences, you know, comics, Bruce Tim, of course, Batman, the animated series, um, uh, Frank Miller, 
Um, Dark Knight Returns was a big deal to me as a kid, um, which has kind of influenced T-Bird's, kind of his, a little bit of his costume and his his size was mm-hmm. the way T- uh, Miller drew Batman in that book. Um, Zay uh, Comics says, uh, do these characters have powers? Uh, T-Bird does have powers. He has uh, this thing called they call the engine that he found on the moon. It's been bedded in his chest. It kind of saved his life. It gives them powers, but they they kind of vary. I mean, it allows them to fly and do other things. I mean, but it kind of they try to change based on the situation. He can't fully control <clears throat> what he can do, what he can't do, which kind of leads to the initial accident that that um, ruins his career. Um, as for, there are other heroes in the book, but he's he's the main one. Um, yeah, Th- uh, Throttle does not have powers. His sidekick, she is. A former MMA fighter, so she's just really tough. Um, so, uh, are, are powers like super unusual for the superheroes uh, in, in in the universe? Um, I wouldn't. Say, no, I mean, there's there's there are some. It's not um, super common, but there are some for sure. Okay. Right. To, to the, okay. There's actually a law within the in the world where you can't use your powers in, in a residential zone. <laughs> um, or within certain certain few feet of businesses and things like there's like ordinances. <laughs> uh, so a lot of times villains will you know do things you know and you know and that's the crime. Yeah, in ra- in neighborhoods so that heroes can't use their powers to stop them. So human shield, basically. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. The, the the heroes kind of use it as a stepping stone to other stuff. Yeah, of course the the ordinances were put into effect after after his incident, so he's sort of, he's sort of the cause of the whole thing. All right, that's that is cool. All right, so let's see. We got T-Board. What do we got? Uh, we're eighty five fifty five. Uh, let's see. You're fifty seven percent. Need to get to fifteen thousand, guys. You need to back this book. And get this to fifteen thousand, so I can get them covers. <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So that's. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm looking through this this thing. It's. Uh, all right. So um. All right. Uh, let's see. You got anything else to say about the book? Um. Just that you know, I really appreciate all the support so far. It's it's gone a lot more smoother than it did last time. Um, uh, it's you know, I'm really happy with the progress, and um, I, I just can't wait to get started. I mean, I'm. I hope people. Well, I'm excited to see what people think of and where the story is going. There's going to be a lot of surprises. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm mm-hmm. excited about it. I hope. Go to the, you're going to the same printer, right? Because I remember getting those books, and they were like substantial. <laughs> when you get them, in, I, I don't know uh, how many pages are they. Uh, are they so not, yeah, sixty pages for issue one, fifty-six for issue two. Yeah, I was. I picked them up. I was like, wow. I was expecting regular. Well, I was expecting like three regular floppies, but I was like, well, these things are thick. Yeah, they were, they were fun read. It doesn't feel like you're slogging through fifty some pages of book. It's. I mean, it's. It's all really good and. The story pacing is really is really good. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it killed me to even break it up at all. Like, it, it, initially, my my long time goal was always to do it just as a, as a graphic novel. Mm-hmm. But I realized just how unfeasible it was for the amount of pages, and to crowdfund that would have been a nightmare. Like, oh, it'll be done in like two years, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I've broken it up as small as I can break it up, you know. So, but also, I think it benefits. I feel like you get your money's worth, you know. I think you. And so the weight doesn't seem so bad. I hope. You yeah. Know. No, it, it was a good read. Uh, ours were doing forty-eight pages. The plan was to do forty-eight and then maybe split it up and do it as floppies if we can get you know decent distribution from a publisher mm-hmm. or something later on. But now it's like, oh, well, I don't know, because <laughs> uh, we it feel it feels to me like we might go more. We might actually go over, but uh, we'll see once the story starts really rolling. I'm yeah, kind of, I'm kind of writing it by the seat of my pants at the moment. Well, yeah, I mean, it's all a learning experience, you know. Like yeah. we're, we're trying to figure it out, and everyone's got to do, it, you know, what works for them, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think for sure going forward after book four, all future books will be self-contained. Mm -hmm. So there won't be like, it won't be broken up. Um, the stories happen to be, a, the origins have to be a really big one. I had to do it this way, but yeah, I want to make it, hopefully it'll be easier later on for people to just jump in. No, I definitely don't mind the, the length of the story. There was actually another book that uh, I backed and it was, it was good. It was a good story and everything. And uh, I guess, you know, because of the limitations of, you know, how much you could afford for publishing and all that, he had to kind of cut it back. And that was one of the things I know. So I'm like, oh man, this, this is such a, it could have been so much of a richer story. I said, I feel like there was more story there. He's like, yeah, you know, I could only print so many pages for the book, but yeah, right. that, I mean, that's, that's not a bad, uh, that's not a bad criticism to have that. I wish right. it was longer. <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right. Well, I want to thank you for showing up today. Uh, I know we had some technical difficulties. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It, it happens. Like, you know, can't control technology sometimes. Uh, everybody, go back T Bird and Throttle. Check out, follow Josh Howard and check out some of the other art he has. I've seen some of the other stuff you picked. Uh, one of the things I actually have on my phone is your uh, your Janine from uh, from Ghostbusters. Yeah, <laughs> I actually screen grabbed that and it's on my it's on my phone as one of my uh, one of my back one of my pages. Oh, awesome! <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, the, I mean, you, you have a website, right? Yeah, joshhoward.net. Yeah, go to joshhoward.net, and, and I think you sell those kind of prints, right? And there's there's a lot of really good stuff on there. So, I mean, check back to Burton Throttle. Go see what he's got for stuff on his website because he's got, a, he's got a lot of really good stuff that I've checked out. All right, uh, thank you for coming, Josh. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll retweet this tonight for anybody that may have missed the live because uh, they're going to want to see this. This is good. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, no problem, no problem. Any success on your book? You know, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. We're uh, we're we're trucking along. <laughs> we get the best fans. Now it's funny because I'll post I'll post something I'll, I'll post something silly. Like uh, he went to bed the he was you know he was like oh man it's late I need to go to bed I was talking to the Sweens, and then like I post him like hey guys he's in bed we're only a hundred and something dollars away from making four thousand. It'd be great if you woke up 17 minutes later. We were up above 4,000. <laughs> it's like we have really good, like reactive fans, and I really, I really love it. I love interacting. Yeah. I love interacting with the fan base. All right, hey, mm -hmm. you have you have a good one, and uh, I wish you all the success on this because I, I mean, one because I want to get it. I want to make sure it's fulfilled, and two, I just, you know, I love to see, I love to see these these uh, projects get up there. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. All right, you have a good day. You too, man. All right. And for anybody else, uh, let's see. Anybody else that's still on here? Uh, we're going to, we're going to, let's see. We're going to go look at Oddity real quick and see how we're doing. Uh, let's see. Let's go have a look at this. And. Mm -hmm. All right, so guys, Oddity. Right now we are sitting at. Hey, Tank Ferret's here. How's it going, Tank? All right. So, Oddity, we're sitting at 4,775. Uh, this, oh my God, guys. First of all, I love you fans. You guys are just awesome. Uh, not only for you for buying the book, which I absolutely, of course, appreciate. But the interaction is just great, and uh, the stuff that I mean, we're um, I'm surprised. I was actually surprised that we're selling a lot of the higher tiers. There's a lot of people that are really excited about Sween's art. Uh, you get the be in the book tier where we only got four slots left for that, and uh, we're going to be writing some funny stuff. Some guys who've uh, who've bought the be in the book tier have made a couple of suggestions, and we're gonna. We're going to we're going to take their suggestions. We're going to tweak them a little bit, but uh, you're going to really like what's going on with that. Uh, we've still got plenty of these figurines left. Sweens is actually going to give one out. Uh, he's doing like a little raffle because uh, we got over 5000. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, let's see. We're still waiting on somebody to get the all in tier. Uh, let's see. We've sold none of the art pages, but he sold the cover yesterday, which is cool. And one of the other things the people have been, uh, you know, they're backing us. They're backing like two, two different tiers. And it's just, oh, man, 
we love it. We love you guys. We love all the interaction. We love all the support. We're doing. Our, we're trying to support other books too. Uh, and I know there's a lot of you guys that support a lot of different books and are, are really helping out. You're helping us out. You're helping out other creators. Uh, one, one of the little, uh, let me tell you about, uh, for all of you that have backed and you've gotten the update about our little snafu, where uh, the basically what happened was on the book tier, uh, I'd forgotten to add in the domestic shipping price. So we went ahead and, and we took it down and we let everybody know that they can come in and uh, they can either uh, refund the book and, you know, re-up it. And we're going to give you, you know, a, a, a you know original pinup for that. And if you decided not to refund, we're going to give you the pinup as well. We want to make sure everybody's happy about that for our little mistake. Uh, another little mistake. And it's nothing like that. It doesn't cost anybody any money. Uh, we were supposed to, for the book and sketch, there was supposed to be a limit of 25 on that. So uh, I'm going to change this one uh, in a little bit, and we're just going to put the limit. It'll be, since we got four claimed, it'll, I'll limit it to 21 on that. But that's not costing anybody any money. Nobody's out anything on that one. That's just another, that's a little boo-boo that's on our part, and you all don't have to worry about anything like that. So uh, if anybody has any questions about uh, Oddity, and now's the time to ask, because uh, Sweens isn't paying attention. So I can give stuff away. Well, I can't give product away, but I can give story stuff away. Let's see, Michael Beacon. Hey, thanks. Uh, let's see, Michael Beacon's here. Thanks. Uh, Zaid, yeah, it's awesome. We got Ethan for a cover. That was a neat. Uh, Sweens was drawing some stuff, and... Uh, Somebody else, I think somebody else brought it up to Ethan, showed him a picture, said, hey, Ethan, you should do a cover for these guys. Uh, I don't remember who it was. But, uh, and then, uh, and I can't remember if Ethan came back with it or if Sweens was like, hey, uh, you know, we, we would like to draw a pic. He wanted to, he was going to draw Cyberfrog on the cover and he wanted to make sure he had his permission. He wanted to, you know, get his permission to do a Cyberfrog cover. And Ethan was like, why don't I draw my character and you draw your character? So we got it. We got the jam cover going. So it's gonna be oh, it's gonna be awesome. We haven't seen any of that yet, but uh, he's I know he's talked about it a few times. Ethan's uh, taught, hey, he spotlighted us on his show a couple days ago, which was really great. So yeah, five K Club, we're in there. <laughs> we're already at five K, I think. Yeah, we're already at five K. I'm hoping. Uh, let's see. Oh no, no, we're not. My bad. 47. I thought we had already done it. Hold on. Hold on. You know what? I think this needs to be updated. Let me double check. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're already we're already above five. Oh, wow. We've actually gone up today. We're at 90 backers, 5380. So, uh, yeah, guys. You, again, you guys are doing amazing for us. 179%. So, I made a little prediction. And uh, I said my Monday morning, especially since, uh, I don't know, people be getting their paychecks on Friday and stuff. I made a prediction that Monday morning we'll be in five, we'll be in five figures. That's my wishful thinking, fingers crossed. Uh, so hopefully we're up, hopefully we're up there. I think, I think it's totally doable. Uh, we need more eyes. So uh, obviously, you know, tweet it out, check it out. We're going to be on some of the other, maybe horror boards and some other stuff. Yeah. 10,000 next stop. So, uh, yeah, so we'll be on some of the horror boards, I think, uh, uh, message boards. Uh, I've been putting it out on Facebook. Uh, there's probably, uh, there's, I'm sure there's a lot more I should be doing. And I'm still, we're still, we're still working our way through and figuring it out. And uh, that's why we got good fans. Maybe they'll tell us where the best place to post, the best place to get eyes on the project are. But uh, I mean, we're doing great. There's still a lot of people that tell us, hey, you know, we're going to back when we get paid and we're going to back when this happens. And that's cool, too. So that tells it that there's still fans out there that are still, you know, waiting, waiting to hook us up. So uh, yeah, five figure nice person. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So we're hoping. I think we're going to do really well. I'll tell you what the plan is on my end for uh, the results of this book. 
One is to put out a good book for you guys. We're looking at uh, at 5K. We're already that our our 5K is the first stretch goal. Uh, what it all it affects is basically the quality of the paper. We're going to go with higher quality paper, uh, higher quality uh, you know physical book. I would like a slightly stiffer cover than the internals in the internal pages. Uh, for me personally, when the when it's done, I want a good, uh, I want to, I'm basically taking all the money from here and I'm going to put it towards my next personal project, which means I want a good, uh, a good amount for a retainer to give to an artist to work on my next project. That's, uh, going to, that's going to be just me. Uh, I'll also be working on oddity too when, uh, when we're ready for that. Um, but yeah, for my own personal pet project, I want some money to put aside for an artist and a colorist to get uh get something going so i'm gonna be i'm currently working on working on i have an idea for what i'm doing uh i haven't written any any script or outline down yet but i'm basically going over scenes in my head where i want to happen but i have to figure out before i can make it a full story i have to wait till i can figure out how it's going to end uh to me it's not a full story unless i can get an end an ending to it so uh, that's what i'm working out yes yeah it's going to be i'll do you guys want the basic premise? I can sum it up in like one sentence. If you're interested, just let me know. We'll see. Uh, in one sentence, uh, it's going to be super simple. I mean, the story, I've got some complex background for the characters and for the story. And also, once I get that as a little gift to myself, uh, once I get that nice little nest egg for the artist, I'm going to uh, I'm going to purchase a firearm, uh, something a nice little budget revolver. I've been checking out online. That's my little gift to myself. So you're supporting you're supporting the Second Amendment. <laughs> All right. So the uh, the basic premise for my next uh, my personal project it's uh, biker babes hunting werewolves. All right. That's your teaser. Hot biker babes. Hunting, hunting werewolves, and they're. Uh, it's. Uh, I want to make it total grindhouse. It's gonna. Be, it's not gonna be for the kiddies. There's gonna be a lot of blood and a lot of tearing stuff up. Uh, so it's. It's. It's gonna be. I want a really good, really good kind of gritty artist for the uh, for the style. So that's what I'm working on for that one. Uh, that one we'll see. If I get the money, I don't want to. I don't want to give out any numbers. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to get a budget revolver. <laughs> Six figures so I can get a 50 cal. We would have to make more than Ethan level for, or more than Doug to Naple level even to, uh, to get me enough to buy a 50 cal. <laughs> that would be great, though. Hey, if you guys want to do that, we would have, that would be an insane amount of, uh, of backers for that. I absolutely encourage the idea, though. <laughs> yeah, so the Biker Babe one, uh, I've also got a title that I've been working on since high school. <laughs> I had a, I, I came up with this title in high school. I used to draw, do little scribbles, a little, like, joke humor scribbles. And one of them was about, like, these kind of wayfish pop stars. One of them was Fiona Apple, and the other one, I think, was uh, Jewel. And I would draw these weird little sketches, and one of them was called, uh, one of them was called, uh, oh no, the, the store, the, it was like a little sketch movie poster, and it was both of those girls, and I called it The Daughters of Vengeance. And that title has stuck with me since high school. And then I was thinking about it, not the other day, because I've been actually working out this idea for a couple of months now. Uh, I was like, oh, man, Daughters of Vengeance. And then I started, I don't know where the biker babes and the werewolves came from, but all of a sudden that came out. I'm like, oh, that would be a great title. Barrett 50 Cal. Yeah, those are uh, those are closer to like uh, like seven, between seven and ten Gs anyway. <laughs> I don't know why you need a psych test to get a 50 Cal. It's just another rifle. I realize it's a big caliber, but... Unless that was just a separate issue, the psych test. I'm reading off the chat right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Five hundred Smith and Miss uh, Five Hundred Smith and Wesson. Yeah, I would absolutely. I would totally love that. Have you seen those? Like a cartoon gun. <laughs> I've held one of those at the gun store, and it's like those things are massive, huge. Uh, I'm looking at a budget three fifty seven four inch barrel. That's that's my that's my little reward if this goes well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's no special psych test to buy a particular kind of rifle. <laughs> At least not in the United States. I don't know about foreigners that they have to go through. I don't see. I've never fired the 500 Smith & Wesson. The re I've wanted a 357 for a long time. Uh, I fired one at a, at a range one time, and I've bought multiple guns since then, but for whatever reason, I've never picked up a 357. But I, I fired one at a range one time, and it was just... Oh, I loved it so much, and it was accurate. I think it was probably a Smith and Wesson. It was it was accurate, and it was just fun to shoot. So uh, I want to I want to get one myself. I've got a forty four Magnum, single single action. It's like a, a Ruger Blackhawk clone. It's uh, by Inter Arms, and I like it. But uh, I want a nice. It's only single action. I want a nice double single action uh, revolver. Mosin Nagant revolver. Oh, I think I've I think I've seen that. I think I've seen Nagant revolvers. An Enfield revolver? I don't know. I'd have to see that. I'm gonna look that up. Wanna make this a gun stream? I'll look up some guns. Let's see what we got. Enfield Revolver. I'm going to look that up. Enfield Revolver. Let's see. Oh, what do you know? Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Let's see here. Let's bring that up. Yeah, so that's an Enfield revolver. What I like for for an older revolver. Yeah, that's pretty cool. For an older revolver, I like the uh, Webley, which is what Indiana Jones has, and it's uh, well, I guess this one's a break action too. If you look uh, right in the right, just in front. Let's see, if you look just in front of, why didn't that share the same? Oh, because it opened it up on a different screen. All right, if you look just in front of the, uh, where the cylinder is, you can see that little, that little hinge there. It looks like it's a brake top, like the, like a Webley. All right, there you go. You can see it actually right here. There's your Webley. It's a brake action. That's actually kind of neat. Because I'd consider that, because I know Indiana Jones had a had a break action like that, break action revolver. Sorry, I just got another notice from somebody. Uh, it's just Josh thanking me for having him on. Josh is a good guy. Definitely, you guys need to back our. Uh, you guys need to check out T-Bird and Throttle. It's a, oh, man, it was actually, it was really one of my favorite books that I've backed. Let's see. Chris Evans says he's always been a fan of brake top revolvers. It, it's kind of a neat design. I actually, I've seen other, I've seen others like it. And uh, I haven't been particularly interested in it, but I think, I, st I think it's a neat gun. Uh, let's see. Let's look at that Nagant rifle or that Nagant pistol. Let's see. Mosin Nagant pistol. Is that one break action too? Oh my god, look at that guy. <laughs> is that what you're talking about? Because that is terrible looking. <laughs> that looks awful. <laughs>
Uh, I think maybe he's talking about this one here. Hold on. Uh, the one, not the one in the big picture, because that is ridiculous. I think you're t you're talking about that one, that other one in the corner, right? <laughs> yeah, that one's actually pretty cool looking too. I can't just open it because it opens in another screen, and then I got to work through all the share screen stuff again. But uh, I think you're talking about the the one in, in the white box in the top corner. That's pretty cool. I think I've seen those on like classic firearms on those websites. Uh, they, uh, I'll, I'll go, I'll go to those and, and stuff and look at some of the uh, some of the older guns they have. Uh, you can, you can have those sent to your house if you get the right license. Because that's um, that falls under antiques or something, and as long as you have that antique firearms license, you can get those sent right to your house. You don't have to go through a gun show or gun store. Would a shotgun be a good first gun for a home? That depends. Um, I mean, there's some people that say yes uh, if you know how to use it, uh, and if it depends if you're. If you fired a shotgun and uh, you can handle it, because some, I mean, some people, um, I don't know what you're like. I don't know you personally. Some people have smaller frames and uh, know, a shotgun can be too big for them. That really depends on, on you. Uh, what's good about a shotgun is if you got buckshot or if you have, uh, if you want to do the birdshot option, I would, if you're defending your home, go with the biggest round that you can handle. Because you want to kill the guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. You want to stop the guy. And if you're going to point a gun at somebody, you better hit what you're pointing at. So in that sense, a shotgun is a good choice because it spreads. And also it's unlikely that the pellets or whatever are going to exit the house. <laughs> Don't do the birdshot buckshot deal. That's stupid. Uh, use buckshot. Uh, it's less likely to go through the walls of your house. Uh, I'm not saying you. I'm not saying you shouldn't use stuff like an AR-15. Those they have their purposes, and they have their purposes for home defense. There's nothing wrong with using those. Uh, you you bust one of those out, and people see it. I mean, the fact that it's a big gun, and it's you know it's. I'm gonna, the psychological aspect of it being a little more scary looking will usually end it, uh, maybe. I mean, you never know. It's always an unpredictable situation. Don't take anything I'm saying as gospel. Because I have a particular theory about a carry gun, too, what I think is an ideal carry gun. But, again, take it with gospel. What I think an ideal carry gun is, is uh, a big old three fifty seven. As silver and shiny as you can get it. And usually it's a nickel plated or stainless steel or something like that. Because if it's at night and something happens and you've got to pull a gun, that is immediately recognizable as a gun. And if it's shiny, any light's going to shine off it so they'll be able to see it. You don't have to load it with 357 rounds. You can load it with 38s. That's what's good about a 357. Another reason why I like it a lot. Now, obviously, a 357 revolver has its limitations. It's only got six shots. Some have seven or eight. You can get those. And there's nothing because I because I'm giving this idea of a recommendation. There's nothing wrong with getting other kinds of you know uh, semi-auto guns. I actually I carry my personal carry gun is a 40 caliber H and K USP full size. So. Don't take this. Don't take the revolver recommendation as gospel. But to me, psychologically, you pull that out. People see how big it is, and it's immediately recognizable as a gun. Most of the time, just pulling a gun will end whatever con confrontation. Be prepared to use it all the time. But a <laughs> cold steel sword. Yeah, there you go. If you want to carry around a big old sword in Texas, I think that's legal now. You can carry swords around. But yeah, you want to defend yourself with the best weapon that you know how to use. And you want a gun with stopping power. They teach police officers, they don't teach them shoot to kill. They teach them shoot to stop. And if somebody is trying to kill you, you want to keep shooting them until, you, until they have stopped the action. 
and it's not as easy as looking from the outside like in the movies you're going to get that tunnel vision you're going to see that you're going to you're going to see whatever's going on and you're going to shoot straight it doesn't matter what training you have the better training you have you will always revert back to that training that's it's muscle memory you want to train for good muscle memory so if you're learning to shoot that's what you want when you're when you're teaching yourself to shoot with a revolver you don't got to shoot from 25 yards you don't got to be good from 25 yards you got to be good from five feet in front of you because that's when you're going to pull a revolver or that's when you're going to pull a handgun uh rifles obviously hunting and that kind of stuff you want to be good long range that's what they're designed for a handgun is designed to shoot somebody five feet in front of you who's trying to kill you so that's that's my gun that's my gun theory such as it is i'm sure in the gun culture like everything else there's a million different theories mine is not the end all be all ninja stars frowned upon i would frown upon them i wouldn't think <laughs> throwing i'll tell you what throwing knives and ninja stars are terrible self-defense weapons they are terrible self-defense weapons because if you throw your knife at somebody what you've done is disarmed yourself and armed your assailant same with ninja stars unless you hit that guy right in the middle of his forehead you have just given him a weapon to use against you that is the absolute theory on throwing knives and throwing stars for your own self-defense Now, uh, let me see. Let me, I'm going to find I'm going to find the gun that I've been looking at. I'm going to show you guys what I'm aiming for. Uh, I believe it is an S or is an SR maybe. SR38. Let's see if that'll come up. There you go. Uh Sarsilmaz is the company. Although it sells out of an importer in Texas. Now, I'm going to completely go against what I told you just a few minutes ago. Uh, one, I do like it in the nickel and silver. But this particular gun, for whatever reason, has really caught my attention in the blue. <laughs> I'm not sure poisoning your assailant is actually technically legal. <laughs> Zade Comics. Uh, where is it? Oh, I lost it. Oh, here you go. I would say if you can get your hands on a magic wand, that is the best defense. See how good it is in the book Magic Cop on IGG. Definitely back Magic Cop on IGG. Uh, we'll pull that one up here in a minute. Yeah, you know what? We'll pull that up. We will pull up Magic Cop. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Indy, Indy, go go. Uh, no, I don't want that. Indy, go go. Uh, let's look up Magic Cop. Magic. Oh, we're still on the front page. Look at that. I looked the other day and we weren't. There we go. We're going to look at Magic Cop. And then we're going to go back because I just saw an image I want to look at that looks hilarious. All right. Here's Magic Cop on Indiegogo. Uh, they're at 95% funding, which is freaking awesome, guys. Good job on that. Uh, let's see. We've got 15 days left. Uh, what do you need? Uh, 3,000. So you need... 109 bucks. Somebody give these guys, throw these guys 109 bucks. Somebody throw these guys 109 bucks and get uh, get Magic Cop funded. Uh, let's see. Let's take that down so we can see the whole image. Yeah, this looks like a super cool book. I love the whole Harry Potter, Miami Vice deal going on there. Yeah, man, this is, uh, I don't know, let's scroll through some of the images. I can't play the video because 
for some reason through Streamlabs, it's going to just bind up. It just gets the circle. But uh, we'll go through definitely some of the art here. Uh, I guess the deal is we got mermaids that are getting their tails cut off and getting legs on so they can be prostitutes. And they're getting murdered. Do I get that summed up right? Here we go. When a mermaid turns up dead, the only detective with the spells to crack the case is Magic Cop. I love that whole effect you got going on, like the uh, the dot matrix type stuff. I think that's that's really cool. It adds really to the to the tone of the book. Uh, there we go. And get some of that going on. There you go. And you got hot She Hulk. <laughs> what is she like? A uh, like a ogre or a troll or something? <laughs> Let's see. Going to Google Wagas Wakasaji. Isn't that one? Uh, is that the short sword that goes along with the uh, katana? Uh, let's see, tank fair. Let's see, I'm behind. I'm getting whenever I have to go and check out the go through the Indiegogo and scroll through it, I get away from the chat. So, oh, Elliot Fernandez, yeah, Elliot Fernandez, original cover still available. Swords are just medieval firearms, spears, F the world. You know what? <laughs> All right, I always get FTW wrong. I know it's for the win, but I always think it means F the world. <laughs> it's almost like. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a few beers. F the world. That's that's always how I look at it for some reason. Uh, let's see. Yeah, comic comic sweet Eskimo. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we'll yeah we'll definitely get this thing funded. 109 bucks gets it there, guys. So push this out and push out that number. That's actually a really cool thing. People like people. I, I think that encourages people. Oh, it's only 109 bucks. We can get there. Uh, let's see. Uh, she's a witch. Oh, the, the green girl's a witch. Oh, that's okay. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see. He did the ash can cover. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tank Ferret. Yeah. You're talking about the FTW. Get you a halberd. Yeah, those are good concealed carry weapons. There's a halberd. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Let's go back to Magic Cop. Let's see. Doing our mid afternoon. What time is it? I gotta go pick up my kid from school here in about 20 minutes. So uh, let's see. We'll go through some more of the arts. This is the last one of the thing. That's pretty cool. That's really neat. I like this idea that they're in the bag. Uh, let's see. So to get to 109 bucks, what do we need to sell? Look, signed comic and signed ash can, 45 bucks. That's a really good deal right there. Uh, we actually don't have any signed tiers on the oddity. On the oddity thing we might have to fix that i hate to add it afterwards because then it's like oh how come i missed it in the beginning so uh i think what we'll do is we'll we'll do some we'll do some stuff where uh, you can get a pinup or something signed uh and then one of the things we're not planning on as far as like we're making solid plans but we're hoping to uh <clears throat> i think uh cincinnati comic con uh next year sometime if we do well, we make enough money. We might go. We might go there, and then you can you can see us both at Cincinnati Comic Con, because that's the one I think that's closest to both of us. Uh, you can get a signed book for twenty five bucks. Uh, let's see. So you get we, have, we sell four signed books. Sell let's see a couple of these signed comic and ash cans, uh, and then a little bit more. You sell a couple of digitals. And you're, you're there. You just, you know, four books or two of these and a digital. Or what else we got here? We got two signed books. Yeah, sell a couple of sets of those. I mean, there isn't much to get to that goal, guys. So put it out. Let people know. 109 bucks gets them, gets them three grand. That's what we want to see. We want to see these guys get funded. Or we want to see them get more than funded. I mean, we're definitely more and more about it. Uh, let's see. Comic book ash can four print, 65 bucks. Come on, that's not bad either. That's a good deal. There we go. Five comic bundles, 75 bucks. 
you can buy one and then you go what you do is you take it and you go to your uh you keep one then you take it go to your local comic store you would be like hey man i got some comics to sell you uh let's see and then let's see elliot for there you go the elliot fernandez cover uh there it is right here you can see it in white that looks pretty cool uh 700 bucks and that's the original art i imagine has to be so that's cool uh, Elliot Fernandez original piece seven hundred seven hundred dollars that gets him over the top guys that gets him way over the top so everybody chip in we just sold all our, our original cover so I mean it happens guys I mean those things do sell uh, executive producer jacket oh that one's all sold out all right guys so we're scrolling through there we go that's the Elliot cover right there behind the scenes so this looks pretty cool guys let's get him there start tweeting it out and again, I was saying throw the numbers out there because people like uh, doing that little push over the top. That's uh, I did that the the other day. We were trying to get to four thousand, and I was like, "Hey, Sweeney just went to bed. Wouldn't it be cool if he woke up at four thousand? And uh, what happened? Seventeen minutes later, we were over four thousand. Uh, people really like pushing it over the top like that. Same thing for five thousand today. I went to bed and I was like, "Oh, we're just a hundred short." Or 200 short or something. Uh, I'm going to bed. It'd be nice to wake up at 5K. Bam! I wake up. We woke up at 5K. So, like I said, one of the things that really it really works when you're tweeting stuff out. If you're really close to that goal, you can appeal to the OCD crowd. Oh, we want the. We, oh, we're just shy of 5,000, or we're just shy of 3,000. If you could just push us up, then uh, then you get that OCD crowd that helps out. But then once you get to a solid number. They'll be like, oh, I, it doesn't affect their OCD anymore. Yeah, it doesn't. But once you're at five, once you're at three thousand, then the OCD guys are like, no, don't buy anymore. <laughs> uh, let's see. I have to catch up now. Let's see. <laughs> Chris Evans says, does she weigh the same as a duck? Uh, let's see. Ducks are heavy in your universe. All right, per logic. I'll see you there. Let's see. Bunch of add-ons also. Naked nudie prints. That's what we like. That's how you sell them. Well, you can only sell them to so many people that way. Because <laughs> I think some people get turned off by it. But, uh, yeah, everybody likes naked nudie prints, too. Let's see. Yeah, no problem, Zade. No problem. We like to. We like everybody to... We don't like people to just make their goal. We want people to make as much money as possible. The more money you make on a book, the more likely you are to make more books. And that's what we want to see. We want to see people making more books. So the more money you get, the more chances, the more likely you are to make more books. And that's what we like. All right. Seven Legions recently sold and appear in the book tier. Uh, still got a way to go. He's working on getting some shows. Guess what? We're going to look up Seven Legions right now. I don't know how many people are watching right now, but we're gonna we're gonna go find Seven Legions. That one looks really good too. Let's see, Seven. I think I just looked up. I think you guys did a video or something on that the other day. Is that it right there? Orphan becomes a samurai. I think that's right. All right, so guys, also check out. Well, let me get this. Let me get rid of that. Like that, so we can see all the art in there. Uh, what do you got? Forty days left. You just you just posted it, right? So let's see. Or did you? You had the sixty day total. How many days into it are you? Uh, let's see. All right, so let me get on the page now. All right, so Seven Legions. Let's run through some of the art here. It looks really good. Orphan, an orphan becomes a samurai who takes on the greatest threat the Seven Legions have ever faced. Uh, let's see. Let's read about the write-up. In a galaxy at risk, a young samurai will prove their greatest hope. The angel, as recall served the seven legions for 2,000 years and encountered many threats. 
and served with valor until he discovered a plot by three of the seven legions' greatest enemies to destroy them from within and overrun the allied empires they protect. However, before Azrakal could warn the people of this new threat, he vanished, leaving only his memories behind in the dreams of Heiko, an orphan turned samurai. Heiko lives in a time of chaotic civil war in Japan that would pit his clan against their former allies, leaving Heiko to choose between fighting the war and threatens the family that takes him in, or facing off with a galactic threat he is destined to end when he barely knows his own world. Is it Heiko or Hiko? But uh, that sounds really cool. Uh, let me see. We're going to go through the art here. Uh, let's see. Seven Legion. I, I wish I could watch the trailers and these things. Uh, there we go. One of the angels. Let's see. Pablo Romero's pinup of Kadra on a Seven Legion starfighter. Kadra is a gatekeeper seraphim given the power to create portals. Let's see. Print two. Henry Ponciano's Art of the Omai oh Family. Top to bottom, Heiko is an adult. Uh, all right, Hi oh this is oh yeah I know the, they were looking at this on Malin show right and they were talking about how well it, how well it was done up. Uh, here we go. Let's see, top to bottom, Heiko is an adult. Asora, Heiko's adoptive mother. Cade, her shadow, and Yoshinobu, Heiko's adopted father. Okay, next we got looks like uh, one of the scenes from the. In the book looks like all modern techie sci-fi stuff not trying to blow it off i'm just you know that's uh you know trying to give the basic description of what's going on here uh here we go some more action some more samurai action and there we go that's a really cool cityscape and we got some more stuff going on here and let's see some more sequentials the angel wings that's pretty cool i always i always you can't go wrong with redheads comics are full of redheads and then you got redheads and then you got red faces right there all in one panel all right and there's some more sequential stuff and some more oh there we go that's pretty cool all right so guys check out seven legions uh let's see they're at the same goal we're at, 3,000. They're at 19%, 595. We can definitely bump that number up. So, uh, guys, start sharing this out. Start retweeting it. Tell all your friends. Uh, Seven Legions. Excuse me. Good sci-fi, futuristic, samurai adventure. All right. So, everybody everybody, check that out. I want to say Hiko. So, did I pronounce it right? Well, I was saying Heiko, wasn't I? Hiko. All right. So, guys, make sure you check the book out and pronounce the names right. <laughs> All right. Tank Ferret's leaving. Hey, later, folks. Good hunting. Uh, tag me so I can be sure to retweet. Yep. Definitely, definitely do that. Uh, let's see. Chris Evans. Redheads are the best. Yes, they are. I love redheads. Although my wife is blonde, so don't tell her. Redheads in comics are awesome. Yeah, let's get... Yeah. There you go, Tank Ferret. I know. I think he left, but uh, let's get seven legions to a thousand before the weekend. Absolutely, that is a doable goal. Uh, just pass it around. Everybody likes to see uh, enthusiasm. Make sure you're tweeting that thing out every single day, two, three times a day. And guys, I know I don't. I don't always do it, but if you can, when you retweet something, hit the retweet with comment, and then say something cool about the comic when you're retweeting. Uh, Chris Evans is really good about that. Uh, but but try to do that. Find something really cool that you like about the comic, or even just you know a humorous statement or something, something that really will will get people interested and in that will read the tweet instead of just seeing the Indiegogo thing go up. Give it a give it a little comment, just something. Hey, check this book out. It looks really cool. Sci-fi adventure. Oh, it's got samurais in it. Something like that. That's uh that's how you want the, if you want to help somebody out. You know, retweeting is great. Absolutely. I said i don't do that for everything i retweet but if you can find something really cool about the book that you like and, and put that in the comment section when you're retweeting uh you can, not everybody can back everything but if you can you can help out by you know supporting giving some support and stuff that's the way to go that's one that's one big thing that helps tags add tags there you go 
All right, so that is seven legions. All right, guys, I'm going to have to quit in a little bit. Yeah, I got to quit. Uh, I got to get ready to pick up my kid from school. So uh, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you all watching in the middle of the afternoon. You all don't have jobs, do you? <laughs> uh, let's see. I tag, I tags by tags, you just mean, uh, oh, you're talking about like uh, hashtags? Uh Oh well, yeah, I guess so. Hashtag seven legions or hashtag try to get it try to get it trending. I know uh, Sweens does that a lot for us. He hashtags oddity, and I did that for a while. And uh, I should probably do that a lot more. All right. So yeah, uh, I'm on my day off. That's why I'm <laughs> streaming in the middle of the day. Uh, hey, keep an eye out, guys. I'm going to be doing uh, another couple of ASMR streams. If you don't know what that means. It's going to sound weird when I describe it, but then I'll describe what my version is. People do weird ASMR stuff where it's like there are certain things that kind of trigger, trigger uh, I don't know, contentment or, or something. Oh, Michael Beaton starts his new job officially tomorrow. Hey, good congratulations, man. I hope it, I hope it goes well for you. <laughs> uh, ASMR is like for whatever reason, people will post weird videos of people like combing their hair or, you know, tapping on stuff, and it's a weird thing that I guess relaxes some people. Well, my ASMR streams, um, uh, I get collector cards. If you look back in my history, you'll see where I did openings of, uh, of uh, it was, it, they were Corvette collector cards, and I just, like, I got a whole unsealed box, or a whole sealed box, and I unsealed it and opened up every single pack of cards and just went through the cards. And then, uh, so I'm going to, but I like to, I'll chit chat with the, with the, uh, I'll chit chat with you guys in the, in the comments and we'll, <laughs> Chris Evans, I promise it will be fun because the way I do it, well, I can't promise it'll be fun. It might just be boring for you. But what I do is I open up the packs of cards and then like I go through the cards. I'm like, oh, you know, this was a 53 Corvette and this is what a 65 Corvette. I might read a little bit what's on the back. And for me, I just love. I one of the things I loved about collecting cards, and that's a big selling point. If you're doing a, if you're doing an Indiegogo, if you've got, if you've got uh, trading cards, I'm totally, I'm totally cool. Hey, Dragon's here. Well, I'm about to leave Dragon, so I'm sorry you missed it, but uh, you can watch a little bit later. So, uh, yeah. So I open up the pack of cards and we go through, you know, whatever it is. Uh, the last one was uh, Corvette cards. Uh, the next one, I have ordered a box of uh, uh, Harley Davidson cards, but just so you know that I'm not, you know, not doing comic books, I actually got a deal on some 1993 Marvel masterpiece cards. So when that comes in, I'll be doing an ASMR stream on opening Marvel masterpiece cards from 1993 and going through them. So if you're into collector cards and you know, you you like that kind of thing. We, plus, we chit chat and stuff like that. It's just not me being silent. Well, you know, you can ask questions. We'll talk about the cards and talk about collecting cards and talk about different other stuff. So uh, that's it's, it's a neat, fun little like chat stream. So uh, when those come in, we'll be doing that here probably next week sometime. All right. So I got to log off. I got to go get my kid from school. I hope everybody else has a really cool day. Make sure you back oddity. And uh, make sure you back all these other ones, Seven Legions, Magic Cop, T-Bird and Throttle. Don't forget about T-Bird and Throttle. That one, oh, guys, I did not kiss his ass enough on that. I, that is honestly, without a doubt, that is one of the best books that I have backed uh, off, off of Indiegogo. The T-Bird and Throttle series, You, oh, my God, no regret backing that one. You just got done working at a trading card shop. Until next time I'm asked. I love trading cards. Oh my god. And and my wife's my wife's gonna kill me. Well, actually it was her idea to do the openings for the cheap cards because we're gonna go uh, uh we like to go sometimes uh flea marketing and I like to look for comics and stuff like that and see what I can find. And we found those cards and we figured we'd give it a shot and see how that stream turned out. I actually liked the way uh the vet stream turned out because we talked a little I'm not a car guy, but we talked a little bit about cards. Talked a little bit about other stuff that came up with the chat. It's actually, we'll try to make it a fun stream. We'll make it interesting. And it's one of those things where, you know, we can talk about anything that comes up. 
but I just, you know, like the idea of opening the cards and stuff like that. All right. So, uh, hey, everybody, thanks for showing up. Make sure you're back Seven Legions. Make sure you're back in Magic Cop. Make sure you're back in Oddity. And make sure you're back in T-Bird and Throttle. All right? Y'all have a good day. I got I to gotta split. <laughs> All right. Take it easy, guys. Let's post, post Chris's last one. Let's see. Yeah, me and my mom does the same. Flea markets, auctions, keep my eyes open for comics, cards, guns, pretty much. I actually bought my 44 Magnum at an auction. I paid about 400 425 for it. Oh, yeah, card shop. Hey, Durkin, see if you can get me, since he works at a card shop, see if you can get me a deal on some of those uh, some of those old 90s Marvel cards. If you can get me good deals, uh, get in touch with me. I won't always buy them, but if you can get me a really good deal, I might just uh, might just do that. All right. Everybody have a good day.